Oscar-winning composer James Horner is believed to have died after his plane crashed in... The name James Horner is a legendary name in the film industry. He was a famous composer who brought the magic of music to life in the most beloved films. He became famous for his outstanding musical performances in films such as Southpaw, Magnificent Seven, Titanic, Avatar, Apollo 13, and Braveheart. His music filled cinemas and touched millions of hearts. But on June 22, 2015, in the middle of his illustrious career, something terrible happened. This is the tragic story of James Horner. James Horner was born on August 14, 1953 in Los Angeles, California, United States. His musical genius started at the age of five when he learned to play the piano and violin. He studied at the Royal College of Music in London and received his bachelor's degree in music from the University of Southern California. After completing his master's degree at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and earning his doctorate in composition and music theory, James launched his career in film music in the 1970s and 1980s. He became one of the most respected composers in Hollywood, composing the music for two of the most successful films in history, Titanic 1997 and Avatar 2009. Additionally, he received an Oscar for his work on Titanic. In addition to his fame as a film composer, James has also composed a significant number of concert works that have been performed internationally. James's exceptional talent was not just the result of hard work and dedication. According to his wife, Sarah, James believed that his unique contributions to the music world were partly the result of his particular neurological wiring, which he associated with Asperger's syndrome. This self-awareness revealed his unique view of the world and enhanced his ability to create gripping, emotionally deep pieces of music. But besides his talent and passion for composing music, he also had a deep interest in aviation. James's success in the film industry allowed him to purchase his own plane. He learned to fly and obtained his single-engine land and rotorcraft ratings. James owned several small airplanes and was fascinated by their mechanics and the history of aviation. He combined his passions for music and aviation by composing the soundtrack for Living in the Age of Airplanes a 2015 documentary exploring aviation's influence on the modern world and transportation. Recognized for its breathtaking aerial footage and original music, which collectively showcased the wonders of aviation and its worldwide significance. This experience reinforced James's fascination with aviation. He decided to fulfill his dream by getting behind the wheel himself. On the morning of June 22, 2015, James Horner departed from Camarillo Airport in Ventura County at 8.10 a.m. This small airport, primarily receiving private aircraft, has only one runway. Although weather conditions were favorable for James, he had not filed a flight plan. During the flight, he maintained communication with the Southern California Air Route Traffic Control Center, indicating his intention to perform aerobatic maneuvers at altitudes ranging from 2,500 to 10,000 feet above sea level. James flew in a single-engine Short Brothers S312 Tucano TMK1 with a registration number N206P over Quetal Canyon in the Los Padres National Forest in California. This expansive forest, renowned for its biological diversity, covers nearly 2 million acres and spans 220 miles from north to south in central and southern California. The breathtaking mountain ranges in this area reach heights of nearly 9,000 feet, an altitude that James was eager to explore during his flight. At 8.23 a.m., James informed the controller that he would be performing flight maneuvers between 2,500 and 10,000 feet above sea level. Throughout the flight, he received repeated warnings about possible radar loss at lower altitudes due to the mountainous terrain. James confirmed multiple times that he was aware of this, actively monitoring the high mountains in the area and stated his intention to return to Camarillo Airport within one hour. Occasionally, during his acrobatic maneuvers, his plane would temporarily drop off radar, only to be picked up again when he gained altitude. As James flew the plane over the beautiful landscape, he maintained regular radio contact with air traffic control. At 9.24, he informed the air traffic controller that he would begin descending and cautioned that they may lose radio contact for a few minutes. Shortly afterward, communication was indeed lost. 
Despite several attempts by the controller to re-establish contact, there was no response from the pilot. Something went terribly wrong. Shortly after losing radar contact, another aircraft in the area reported a small fire in a riverbed to air traffic control. Local emergency services arrived at the scene and confirmed that an accident had occurred. According to witnesses, the plane flew east towards Quetal Canyon Road at a relatively low altitude before disappearing behind a mountainside. Seconds later, a plume of smoke rose into the sky. James Horner's plane had crashed to the ground with devastating results. Oscar-winning composer James Horner is believed to have died after his plane crashed in Southern California. As news of the tragic accident spread, some suspected the risky maneuvers by James were the cause. However, Further investigation suggested that the incident was not simply the result of reckless behavior with a prized possession. As it turned out, there were several factors at play. The National Transportation Safety Board gathered information from various sources to compile a report on the plane crash. They discovered the following. On the morning of June 22nd, James had officially logged 891.2 flight hours. His logbook suggested that he had flown nearly 77 hours in the type of model aircraft involved in the accident, including nearly 28 hours in the last six months. James held a private pilot certificate for single-engine land and rotorcraft aircraft and had received a Federal Aviation Administration second-class airman medical certificate on June 19, 2015, with the condition that he wear corrective lenses. Additionally, he informed the administration that he was only taking medication for high cholesterol, but this was not entirely true. In fact, on his last and fateful flight, his cholesterol medication was not the only substance in his body. That morning, he had ingested a mixture of drugs that could reduce performance. Because the pilot was ejected from the plane, the Ventura County Coroner's Office could not perform an autopsy due to the condition of the body. The Federal Aviation Administration's FAA Bioaeronautical Sciences Research Laboratory was able to conduct toxicological analysis on muscle tissue samples from the pilot and discovered the presence of ethanol, butalbital, and codeine. These substances are known to reduce physical and mental capabilities, posing significant risks to activities that require intense concentration, such as piloting an airplane. As James maneuvered his plane through a series of dips and dives, the drugs in his system likely reduced his reaction time. It is possible that he was not fully aware of the danger he was in. The investigation of the crash site revealed that the aircraft was destroyed by the forces of a violent impact and a post-crash fire that scorched about one acre of land surrounding the crash site. This wreckage, including all major structural components and flight control systems, lay in a dry riverbed within a large area of scattered debris. The initial point of impact showed that the aircraft was flying at a 45-degree downward slope, with the right wing angled downward, indicating a near vertical crash. Close to the end of the disturbed ground track, there was a large crater, with deformed aircraft parts in and around it, and evidence of fuel leakage. The parachute and canopy found scattered around the area along with the remains of the flight control systems, underscore the extent of the aircraft's destruction. The engine showed thermal damage and signs of rotation, indicating it was active during the crash. The wreckage was then transported to a secure facility for further examination. No signs of mechanical failure or pre-impact malfunctions that could have affected the aircraft's normal operation were found. The final conclusion of the National Transportation Safety Board NTSB, regarding the cause of the accident, is that it was primarily due to the pilot's inability to maintain a safe distance from the terrain while flying low, resulting in an uncontrolled impact with the ground. An additional contributing factor that helped cause the accident was the effects of the ingested drugs butalbital and codeine, which hindered the pilot's physical and mental abilities. Following the passing of James Horner, tributes poured in for this respected and beloved figure in the world of film composers. His passing caused a flood of appreciation and memories from colleagues, friends, and admirers around the world. Well-known composers such as Hans Zimmer and John Williams 
along with filmmaker James Cameron, were among those who expressed their respect and admiration. The last three films for which he composed the score, Southpaw, The 33, and The Magnificent Seven, were all dedicated to him. He also worked on the films Hacksaw Ridge and Avatar The Way of Water before his passing, and these two were subsequently dedicated to him.